Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to explain how to use auto-completion in um, Emacs Speak Statistics. So here we have, uh, we're opening up uh, GNU Emacs 26.3, which we installed last time in the screencast. And here I'm using meta x capital R return um, to start R in your, the current directory. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type something, say, um, uh, how about base? So if we type base with two colons and then we type tab, ah, it's going to bring up a completion of all of the stuff that's defined in the base package. So you know, there's lots of stuff here, and we can actually, you know, go through it and use completion. Uh, if we use Control S, we can search through this whole thing. We'll say we're looking for um, tests. Here, there is no tests, so in the in the base package, they don't have any statistical tests. So maybe that would be in the stats package. Let's try that. So here we have all of this stuff in the stats package. And here I'm gonna search for test again. Here there's box test, PP test, Ansari test, Bartlett test, binome test. Maybe that's the one I want. Here I'm gonna press return. I'm gonna press return again, and then it's gonna complete. So I mean, that's one way of, of uh, finding your completion if you know there's some, pa some function in the package that you want. There's um, also, you know, if you just know the first few letters, you can press tab. You get a listing of all of the completions in that other window there. You can type one of those bold face letters. It completes as much as it can after that. And then, you know, it'll give you some more suggestions if you keep pushing tab. So binomial here is a function. And when I type the open parentheses, we see that in the mini buffer down here, it displays um, the arguments of that function. So on the left, we have the function name. And then on the right, we have the argument and its default value. So the first argument name is called link. Next argument is called logit. Uh, sorry, the, the default value is logit. And so if we press tab here now, we have um, a completion that will just complete that argument name because that's the only thing, that's the only one argument. If we use a different kind of, um, if we use a different function like binome test here, we see that we have a bunch of other information that appears. So all of the arguments to that function are separated by commas. You have um, arguments um, that have no default values, um, which just have these empty uh, right-hand side of the equals. Otherwise, the default values appear on the right-hand side, and sometimes they're truncated here, so we, it tries to fit everything on one line by default. But then when you start typing something in here, like, for example, AL, it's going to you know, uh, give you a bunch of new completions, possibly a lot of different functions that start with AL or possibly, you know, the arguments that start with AL and those will have the equal signs after that. So here if we type, we can actually just click there if we want to complete like that. We can also type the T and get that completion uh, after pressing tab. So, um, one thing you notice is that maybe, uh, you know, by, by default, um, you might want to have uh, more information displayed than just this truncated, um, this truncated thing, right? So here we see that there's five arguments. Um, there are other functions that have a lot more arguments, but you could imagine also that you just don't have enough uh, width uh, to display even these five arguments. So let's try to si simulate what happens in that case. Right, so here in this case, we see that, you know, here, 
the argument list is truncated, right? So here we see that there's X and P uh, alternative and something that starts with C and we don't have enough room to finish the rest of the arguments because by default, you know, it doesn't like to, um, to resize this mini buffer at the bottom. So here, like, if you have even smaller window, you see that it's only showing the first four arguments and then it's showing you this dash dash to say that there's some more but we're not going to show you if you want to see them you can press tab that's going to pop up a buffer and it's going to show you all of them but say that you wanted to see them all um by default in that mini buffer what do you have to do so let's go to the ess documentation it explains how to do that here i'm at ess.rproject.org you can click on the html docs inside of the completion chapter um, it explains the different key sequences that you can use to do the completion. It also says, um, you know, that it has some um, documentation about the variables that we can use for the completion. So, for example, um, Yeah, so this is the LDOC functionality, right? The completion of function arguments, right? So uh, the, it displays function arguments in the echo area whenever the point is inside of a function call. So that's what it's doing right here. And um, so in LDOC mode, the echo area display functions arguments at the point, right? So that's what it's doing. It's active by default in um, the ESS mode. That's what we're seeing here. And so we have a few user options that we can use to configure that behavior. So um, ESS LDOC abbreviation style determines how the doc string should be abbreviated to fit into the mini buffer. So possible values are nil, mild, normal, strong, and aggressive. Please see the documentation of the variable for more details. The default filter is normal, right? So, um, you know, if we wanted to, um, to try to um, edit what that looks like, you know, we can edit that variable. And then ESS LDOC also honors the value of LDOC echo area use multiline P, which if set to nil will cause the truncation of the doc string indifferent of the value of the abbreviation style. So we can use that one to also get a multi-line um, um, abbreviation. So, uh, or, or uh, documentation. So let's try to do that here. I'm going to use Control X two to open up another another buffer. Here I'm going to use Control X Control F to find file. I'm going to open up my .emacs file. Here I'm going to use Shift Alt um, period to go to the end of my .emacs file. And here I'm going to use another set Q command. ESS LDOC abbreviation style. And here I'm going to set it to, here we can actually, you know, it says, please see the documentation of the variable for more details. Let's just look at that. Control H V. And so that pops up the documentation page in this other buffer. And so here we have um, the different uh, abbreviation values. So by default, it's normal. It says try mild plus shorten the default values longer than 10 characters. Nil means do nothing. So that's going to like probably be the most, um, the most um, verbose one. So let's try that. Did that change anything? Let's see. Control H V E S S L doc abbreviation style. Its value is nil. Original value is normal, right? So here it's um, supposedly working, but we are seeing the same thing as before, right? So the reason 
why I think is because here we're um, it's just too big for the mini buffer so the other thing that we can do if we want to have more information down there by default we can use this ESSL doc abbreviation style here I'm using control C in my browser to copy it I'm using control X O to get to that other window in Emacs I'm using enter to insert a new line and then you use control Y to yank that variable, paste that variable that is copied from the browser, control A to navigate to the beginning of that line, then I'm going to insert a set Q here and I'm going to set that to, uh, let's look at the documentation for that guy, so that's control H V to see what that variable does. Um, Sorry, that's the same variable that we had before. I meant to copy this other one. LDAG echo area use multi-line P. So let's do that one instead. Here I'm going to use control, uh, sorry, alt B to get back to here. I'm going to use control Y to yank that in. I'm going to use control K to get rid of the rest of that line. And then finally, I'm going to use control HV again to get documentation on this other variable where it shows here, um, it's allowing long LDAC messages to resize the echo area display. So if the value is true, uh, never attempts to truncate the messages. Complete symbol name and function, argless, or one line variable documentation will display it, even as if echo area must be resized to fit. So let's try that. So here let's set uh, let's execute that line of Eli's code by typing control X, control E. And then I'm going to use control X, O to get back to that other buffer, control X, K, and then enter to delete that buffer. And finally here I'm going to insert another space to see that now we have uh, all of the arguments that are showing up on three lines in this mini, mini buffer, right? So now we can see the arguments as long as, along with all of their default. Um, values here. So that um, help text is definitely configurable. Usually I just leave it um, alone. So usually I'm not going to put that kind of stuff in my .emacs file, but just wanted to show a little bit about how Emacs is customizable, how Emacs offers a variety of different completion um, from the R terminal and how you can look up those different options in the ESS documentation. Now, um, to conclude, I'm just going to mention that to get the completion in R buffers, right? so here this is an R um, IESS buffer, and you know you might also want completion in your regular R buffers. So here's a, a buffer called foo.r where maybe we want some completion about that same function, binome test, right? And so by default, I actually uh, am getting a, um, a mini buffer completion at the bottom. Uh, sorry, it's not a completion, but a mini buffer information about those arguments when I type the open parentheses. But when I type tab, I'm not getting any completion by default. Um, and that's because actually there's no attached ESS process yet. So every R buffer, if you want to um, uh, have editing and completion facilities, you have to attach an, ESS, an R buffer. So for example, in this one, you know, I can assign a buffer by either executing a line of code, like for example, here I just type control C, control N, and then I'm just executing, uh, well, definition of the binome test uh, function is here what we're looking at. And otherwise, I can use control C, control S, and that's going to ask me what, um, what process to use, right? And so, here it gives me the choice, either I use the existing R buffer, which is what it used by default when I sent that line, or I can use a new buffer. So if I type star n tab, 
it's going to prompt me for starting a new process, which is called r colon 2 now. Here I can start it in the same directory. And now we can, um, you know, do some different commands in this other r process, right? So this one is separate from the other one. So you can have several different r's running at the same time in Emacs. So here to go back to the other R process, we can use Control X O. Uh, sorry, that that gives gets me back to the one that we have open right here. If we want to see the other one here, I'm going to use Control X O to get to this other window. Then Control X B to switch to another buffer. By default, R. You know, if you uh, press Tab, you can see that's a list of all of the buffers that are currently open in Emacs. And here, if I just type return, it's going to take that default. So now I can see I have one copy of R running over here. I have another instance of R running in this other window. I can have like different scripts which are linked to different R processes in this way. You know, so for example, if I have another script called um, foo two dot R, maybe I want to link that to my R two process. And so then I can use Control C, Control S to say, okay. For this one, I want to use R2, and you see that it's link. It, it's using the R2 process, and so whenever I execute a line of code here, it's going to send that to the R2 process. Whereas if I go back to my original buffer and I use Control C, Control S, and uh, it's going to ask me what process I want to use there. Now I can either send it to the same process or a different one or a new one, right? So here, if I type return, I'm going to change. The process it's currently using R2. Here I'm going to ch change it to using R. Um, and so then when I execute a line of code there, uh, you know, maybe uh, like this, you know, it's going to send that to the other uh, R process, right? So here we have two different R script files that we are looking at and two different R. Um, um, processes that they're interacting with and so yeah um, just to say yeah so to summarize that little bit you know basically you know the completion um, it will work in our scripts as well so here if you press uh, tab it's not working but the default key combination is control X I um, is that not working? So what's going on there? Right, there we go. I'm not sure what was happening before there, but usually, you know, you can use control C, control I to get a completion. Here it says that you can either complete with lambda or n inside of this function, right? So here I use, I type the first few letters and then I type control C, control I to get a completion there. And here I can execute that line of code by doing uh, control C, control N again. Here I'm going to navigate to that parentheses using control S, parentheses, return, uh, and then typing. And here, you know, we uh, we can use completion to get um, various different things. Um, the same the same kind of things that we uh, we were getting on the command line, but just with a different. Um, different key sequence, control C, control I, rather than just tap. I'm not sure why it doesn't work out. Thanks for listening. Bye.